This report is brought to you by Cerule, makers of a new category of plant-based products scientifically proven to naturally increase the number of adult stem cells in circulation. This offers a variety of benefits to reduce the effects of human aging. I have a nagging tennis injury, a rotator cuff shoulder problem. Surgery is pretty iffy, so I've been a longtime user of glucosamine products. They don't help much, but that has been my only alternative. So I gave it a try. The rep told me that it would usually take several months before any noticeable difference would occur. First week, nothing. Second week, maybe a little better. But then by the third week, all of a sudden I realized it was a lot better. All I can say is STEM Enhance has worked for us and non-invasively. Yes, I could have paid $5,000 to have a stem cell injection into my shoulder, but it wears off. Why not stimulate the body's natural ability to generate the stem cells itself, which then travel naturally wherever they are needed for a fraction of the cost? One visit to a doctor can cost more than a month's supply of this product. There's a lot of science behind this. I wouldn't be advertising it otherwise. This works. Check out their website at billstill.cerule.com. There's also a 30-day money-back guarantee on a single bottle purchase so you can try it risk-free. Good morning. I'm still reporting on the coup. I just stumbled upon this interview. I never did catch the name of the host of the show, but he was very knowledgeable, and he was interviewing General Michael Flynn, my favorite. His show was on Lindell TV, a project of my pillow guy, Mike Lindell, whose organization is currently under an unbelievable financial assault. His line of credit has been cut off, and even regular workers for Lindell are under attack by the IRS. Too much truth, Mike. In any case, General Flynn was and is absolutely fascinating. It's amazing that the three-star general still is sharp as a tack despite turning 65 this coming Christmas Eve. Flynn took charge of the Defense Intelligence Agency, the largest of all U.S. intelligence agencies, in 2012 during Trump's first month in office. General Flynn was appointed Trump's national security advisor. Even today, he is still considered the smartest military analyst in the United States. And the bulk of them, he says, are Chinese military age males. He says that some of our high-ranking government officials, you mentioned Mayorkas, actually visiting that site. Mm -hmm. This was taken uh, not too, you know, about a year or so ago. And here it is today. So we can see we've gone from this size camp to this size camp. It's grown. He actually has been on the grounds. He says these, um, these shelters actually are very, very clean. They have bunk beds in them. Uh, there's other showering facilities. He says, though, the number of Chinese military age males coming through here is very, very shocking. And our government is building it. His claim is that our government is helping to build an invasion camp, basically, for the CCP. And now here are the two pictures side by side, May 2023, April 2022. And you can see the growth of this. Um, of course, when we look at what has come out in the last 24 hours, not to mention things from the New York Post uh, months ago, of the money flowing to the UPenn Center, Biden Center from China. Uh, yesterday, we had Congressman Mace talking about uh, what, uh, you know, the money flowing to the Biden family. Just uh, incredible CCP, numbers. CCP, and we're thinking, wait a minute, have we been captured? Because I can think of no other explanation for why our government is so willingly working to yeah. build uh, what seems to be. Well, let me let me talk. Let me just talk about those those pictures. You know, you okay. can put those up side by side so people understand. I mean, the, this this what I understand. And Michael Yan uh, uh, recently and Vandersteel and another gentleman by the name of Ben Berkwam. Berkham have been reporting on there. They're all, you know, they're, they, they are down there and they get, you know, they get cases of malaria and, but they're doing some, you know, talk about yeoman's work for journalism. But that picture on the right tells you that there's a, that there's a, you know, we are, we are permanently creating a structure down in Panama and the Panamanian government does not like this. And so you ask yourself why? And one of the, one of the things that we, that we have to go back on is you can go, people can go look this up. 
uh, Barack Obama, during, during the era of Barack Obama, he gave up. He gave up control of the Panamanian Canal. So we built the Panamanian, Panamanian Canal. The United States of America did that. Uh, it is it is a it is a massive, massive strategic uh, pathway to get you know to, that connects the Atlantic to the Pacific. And so the Chinese, when when Barack Obama gave that up. What he was giving up is he was giving up control of these key locks. The locks are at either end of the Panama Canal. So if you're traveling with military forces by sea or with commercial uh, uh, trade, uh, um, you know, ships and such by sea from China over to Europe in order to do trade, and you have to go around the Arctic Circle, or if you you have to go around the Cape of Good Hope or the or the Cape of uh, of uh, of the Horn, the, the, you know, around Africa, you know, that takes like that could take a couple of days. All kinds of fuel. It comes at an extraordinary cost. Well, if you own the Panama Canal, you cut that by a third. And I think the number's like eight thousand kilometers uh, to get from one side, you know, from China over over to the Atlantic. Uh, let's say that's such a strategic um, uh, advantage that the Chinese have. So. I, uh, we know of Chinese military age men coming into the United States of America. That camp on the right, the, the, what I understand is that these camps have been paid for by USAID. That's where the money's flowing through. Comes out of the Department of Homeland Security. And we tend to use USAID for some of these things. My guess is that these Chinese military age men are going to be down there to work the Panama Canal on behalf of the Chinese government. And that's, and that's, that's my, that's my analysis of why so many Chinese military age men are down there. Number two, uh, the, there's a camp on the, that, that picture on the right, there is a camp at Eagle Pass, Texas, Eagle Pass, Texas. And I was down there about uh, probably a little bit more than six months ago, I think seven or eight months ago. And that camp, it, it looked actually less than what it looked like in that picture on the left. But the camp at Eagle Pass now looks like the picture on the right. So we're building these these cantonment areas where there is hospitals, there is food service, there's you know logistics. I mean, there's there's headquarters. I can tell you that just looking at, at how that thing's laid out, and we're building them primarily to house military age men. And you have to ask yourself, what the hell are we doing this for? You know, it's beyond the why of of of, of uh, the Chinese being able to run the Panama Canal, which which is probably going to be the case here if we're not, uh, if you know, if we don't get ourselves back into power here in this country. Once the Chinese have control of the Panama Canal, then they basically have control of of the waterways and the pathways between the Pacific and the Atlantic. One of the reasons why the Panama Canal was built initially was was to allow for for a free access of trade on a much shorter. Uh, scale, much shorter pathway for the United States of America. That's why we did it. Thousands of people died building the Panama Canal. I lay all that out because when you think about strategy at the geostrategic level and you look at, at a country like China, China has already been building ports and, and air, big air, air, airports, but big uh, naval ports over in Pakistan, a place called Hadar over in Djibouti on the east coast of Africa. They have uh, created a second Suez Canal up in, up in the north part of the Red Sea. They have a major port in Algeria. They have a major port in the Gulf of Guinea in Nigeria. And of course they have access down in the South uh, China Sea where, uh, where they built these islands where, that have massive airfields and massive abilities to be able to, to dominate the, 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 you know, in terms of sea warfare uh, or the maritime warfare. So the Chinese have been doing this for like 30, 40 years now, and they've been really working on it, I would say, since about 2010. And they took advantage of the Obama administration. I was in that Obama administration in very key positions, and we would, we would be laying this out to the Obama administration. And one of the things that they did, I mentioned Ukraine. The, you know, the Russians attacked Ukraine in 2014. The, uh, the Panama Canal was given up by Obama approximately that time when I say given up, basically turned back over away from our ability to control it. And uh, and we probably still, 
there's, there's probably millions and millions of dollars that we still funnel into the Panama Canal to keep it going, which is, which is another one of those things you kind of look at and go, what the hell are we doing this for? In addition to the money that we're flowing in to build these camps down there. So all that said, the Chinese have stated in their 20, I'm sorry, the Chinese have stated in their 1949 plan, which became uh, uh, relatively public in the late 90s because it was a classified uh, plan, a classified uh, uh, doctrine. And in the late 90s, it became unclassified. It's publicly available now that they that they were going to dominate the world in 100 years. They had their 100 year plan. Well, what Xi has recognized and what they what they recognized, what they were able to do is they were able to to undermine the United States of America. And they did it through weak leaders uh, in our own government and or or complicit leaders in some cases. Right. And that, and I don't say that, uh, you know, with uh, with hyperbole. I say that, you know, intentionally, because you, you say to yourself, why would we want to give up something like the Panama Canal? Why would we want to why would we want to give into uh, what the Chinese are doing over in the South China Sea? Why would we want to give into uh, or not stand up to the Russians, you know, during the time that they were that they were lining up? I mean, literally all kinds of forces on the on the uh, Russian border. And there was a dialogue going on at the time. And we knew what what uh, Putin was going to do. All the United States of America, Obama had to do is stand up to him and say, you know, not on my watch. Right. This is what Trump did during his uh, time in, in office. So, again, that landscape of, uh, of geopolitics and geo strategy, it provides China the advantage. It gives them the advantage. So if you talk about, you know, third, fourth, fifth, sixth dimensional chess and the various moves, you know, a chess like that doesn't happen in a in a uh, in a sequential way. It happens simultaneously, right? When people are, are doing things to move, you know, opportunities around to take advantage of things. The Chinese have really taken advantage in Africa. They've taken advantage on on getting access to rare earth elements. They've taken advantage to getting access to not only in Africa, but to rare earth elements in places like Afghanistan. So while we're spending 20 years and all the all the all of our wealth and resources and, and the loss of lives in Afghanistan, the Chinese held on to all the leases for the lithium mines in Afghanistan. Lithium is a component in every single thing that we have, right? Every phone that we have, the, the, the TVs that we're talking through, Lithium is required for electric batteries, right? Electric vehicles, and it's required for a whole range of weapon systems. Well, those same types of resources are in places like Africa. They're in places like South America. They're in places like Southeast Asia. The Chinese have been systematically, you know, playing fifth, sixth dimensional chess and moving things around the, the globe in the, over the last 30 years. And they've done it not under our noses. They've done it you know, in some cases, you know, in in almost I would say in almost cooperation in some cases with us because we we have allowed them to do that. Now let me stop there and because I think the next component of this is to really talk about what they've done right here inside of America. Let's and do you that. And I because, have talked about this. Let's do that because I guess the reason I showed this from Michael Yon tonight, and by the way, Colonel yeah. John Mills was on the other day and talked about. Yeah. Uh, the fact that you have these Chinese right there. He was he just he just got back from a few days yeah. ago being down there in the Panama Panama come now. He said the Chinese are right there. And of course, if they move in and they take control of that completely, and he also was saying they've taken over and now influencing and are able to control many of the leaders of Panama. But if they get control of that, I, we looked up the stats. It's like 40 percent of our goods come through there for the U.S. So you're talking about a strangle point for our just in time yeah. inventory. But I bring all this up because if we are watching a planned collapse of the U.S. or a planned military invasion, whether it's by Iran, we have reports from Todd Benzman uh, that. Lots of Iranians are coming through Venezuela. Venezuela is helping them yeah. get fake passports and get into the U.S. So you've got people coming from Afghanistan. A lot of his, uh, you know, Muslim nations where these Islamists are very much interested in jihad. Uh, so you have an invasion going on with this border down. At a time now, we're talking about possibly instituting a draft um, and sending 
our forces out of the country at a time where generally we may need to have our forces in the country. Is that is that yeah. is that a, a a a false? Yeah, no, I think that's very fair. And you know, you know, we could go in, we could go just for for three or four shows talking about the Chinese infiltration into our government, the Iranian influence in the National Security Council of the United States of America, the, you know, the Iranian influence inside of this White House. And we just, gave them, six, the we just gave them six billion dollars. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, not, it's not just that. It's not just the cash. It's also the influence and the people that they have, you know, that are working inside of our government. And that includes the Chinese and, and their uh, their infiltration into this government, as well as some of the other organizations and uh, and and cultures that exist inside. I'm still reporting from just outside the citadel of world freedom. Good day.